We've already seen Doctor Who doing a lot of desperate moves to try to rekindle fan attention over the last year. The whole 60th anniversary special series was all about making people go, remember David Tennant and how much you loved him? Remember Donna Noble? Remember Rose? Except for now, Rose is a transgender black. Oh, whoops. <laughs> and so everything went super cringy from there. We saw the lectures on pronouns and lectures on uh, female presenting and things like that in the series. It was awful. And it culminated with this bi-generation nonsense, which absolutely makes no sense in the Doctor Who lore whatsoever. They've already killed continuity as much as possible. They did it during the Jodie Whittaker era when they were talking about different things, of course, going on with uh, the whole uh, regeneration and Time Lord Wars and things like that. And uh, now they're going to take this a step further with this, like, fantasy Doctor Who. If you notice, they've changed all of their advertising. It used to be called, like, a, uh, a science fiction space-time adventure, right? Now it's just adventure. They've gotten rid of all that because they are trying to make this into a fantasy show for Americans, and that is where they're pushing everything. Disney, of course, has changed things dramatically. Of course, the new Doctor is a black, possibly gay man, and they've got the white woman companion to uh, to, to burn him on and, uh, and lecture him the whole way through. It's going to be an absolute travesty. She's already gone from the show, we've learned, before the first episode even has aired at this point. And now, of course, Doctor Who is going to be coming back in May with new episodes, and they're trying to gin up some excitement for it because why? The premiere of the Christmas really did very poorly among fans. Nobody wanted to watch it. Everybody saw how bad it was, and it leaned into that fantasy. It leaned into bad musical stuff. It was everything that looked like Disney wrote it for Disney and Americans in this. I don't know how much involvement they really have at the studio end, and not actually something that was doing honor towards the science fiction show that Doctor Who once was. So now they're trying to bring back somebody in order to make one last desperate play at your member berries and hoping it's going to come back. And that's right, Stephen Moffat is going to be joining the writer's room. Now, they've said that he's in for one episode, which is really interesting because Stephen Moffat came back and said that what? Uh, <laughs> he would never write for Doctor Who again. This gets really, really interesting right here because obviously he just lies like all the, of the woke people do, and that's where this is going to go. Now, before we get too much further into my rant about this, because this is going to go uh, <laughs> angry because, of course, I love Doctor Who so much, please hit the like and subscribe button. We are going to be reporting on Doctor Who here as well as all the other problems with woke culture, and we're also talking about alternatives. Uh, we are building something new here, a parallel economy alongside this, along with the Iron Age and a lot of people who are doing really great work here. So so please join us, uh, join our little community. If you want to become a channel member, that'd be awesome too. Really appreciate everybody who supports us on every level. Okay, so Stephen Moffat, interesting choice. Everybody loves him because of the Weeping Angels, of course, and that's the the one thing that he really contributed to the show. That was a great concept and a great episode. Everything after that that he's done, though, has been absolute cringe. I mean, he took over the Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi era, and that's where things got weird and introduced, like, that lesbian lizard lady and the, the weird diversity crap that was pushing further. And, of course, once it got into Stephen Capaldi's era after Clara did disappeared. Uh, it got really diverse and paved that way for Jodie Whittaker to begin with. So Stephen Moffat is not exactly a fan favorite at this point. If you look at most of his stuff, his episodes are very convoluted. They don't make a lot of sense. They're not written very well. If you look at what he did with Sherlock after that, it was exactly the same thing. Just convoluted, non-well-written stuff ruined Benedict Cumberbatch's uh, career almost, and it was just a disaster on every single level. So that's what I expect from an episode coming back from Stephen Moffat. I love how he actually gave an interview saying that, oops, I said I'd never write for Doctor Who again. Guess what? Uh, I am. <laughs> Uh, so he's here for one episode. Russell T. Davies is, of course, doing the bulk of the work as the showrunner, and he's committed to pushing the woke agenda on every level, as he's said multiple times in the past. Nikuti Gatwa's gone out there, and he's said that it's going to lean into the fact that he's black and, of course, push identity politics stuff. And Millie Gibson said that things are going to be controversial in a good way, like they often say these days uh, in the SJW news headlines. So this is going to be a train wreck. And of course, uh, oh, I just don't even want to watch it at this point. I don't know anybody who does. This is why Nerd Roddick's out there with the hashtag RIP Doctor Who, because it truly is dead. They're trying to bring back things for member Barry's sake, and it's just not working. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.